We may have defeated the mighty Carthage, but I am certain they will seek revenge. Rumors rise from the west of a land called Hispania, rich with precious metals and fine horses. So we sent our dignitaries to see if there is any truth to these rumors, and if there is, then establish trade with the locals. However, they returned with troubling news. Artage has been encroaching relentlessly onto these lands, filling their own coffers with its precious resources. Meanwhile, my spies in Africa bring even more troubling news. This newfound wealth of Hispania is being used by the Carthaginians to build a new fleet and army. I fear I haven't done enough to permanently incapacitate them from waging war. But it is not completely my fault, for I was actually stopped from doing what was necessary for the Republic by my political rivals in the Senate. My spies in Roma informed me that it was actually Marcus Junius Brutus, the pacifist who upon witnessing my success firsthand in Sicily raised the motion for peace with Carthage. However, now is not the time for rash decisions, so I decided to be patient and assess the situation in the Senate. I put forward a motion to secure our northern borders by invading the warlike Veneti who have expanded their holdings in Cisalpina. They are Gauls after all, and we are well aware of what their kind is capable of. I also suggested the invasion of Epirus for violating their peace agreement and refusing to pay the agreed annual tribute to Rome. Unsurprisingly, the loudest opposition to both of these motions was none other than Marcus himself. With my suspicions confirmed, it was now time to act. While previously my focus had firmly been on commanding the Roman military machine, I had completely neglected the far more dangerous political machine that is the Roman Senate. It was time to send my rivals in the Senate a message. Come the spring of 270 BC, Marcus Junius Brutus, leader of the Junii clan, was found mysteriously dead in his countryside villa. Rumors spread that the Julii had a hand in his assassination. I don't mind these rumors, they serve me well and dissuade my rivals from aligning themselves with the opposition. And so, in the spring of 269 BC, with my opposition in disarray, both of the motions were passed in the Senate. And so, I assigned Legio II Fratensis with the task of invading and conquering the kingdom of Epirus once and for all, while I marched north into Cisalpina with Legio I Italica, capturing the settlement of Patavium for the Republic. We wintered at Patavium and replenished our forces before continuing our offensive deeper into Cisalpina. In the summer of 268 BC, we besieged the city of Medlan. The Veneti, confident in their numbers, sallied out to meet us. It was a battle of epic proportions, however, in the end, even though the enemy far outnumbered us, Roman training and discipline won the day. With Medlan and Patavium firmly under Roman control, we became the dominant power in Cisalpina. We even managed to establish friendly relationships with the Celtic tribes to the north of the Alps, as they were also formerly at war with the Veneti and were happy with our campaign against them. With our northern border secured, we are now finally prepared to brace ourselves for what I believe will be an imminent attack from a vengeful Carthage. What is up my friends and how's it going? Welcome back to the fourth episode of our Let's Play series as Roma with your fellow comrades summary. Let's hop right into the episode. And the very first thing we'd like to do is to have a look at our politics as you can see we are fairly having loyal other parties, so as of now there is no concern over there. Meanwhile, we are also respected in the Senate, so that's good. And we can have a quick look at our characters. We were in the process of leveling up a few characters. And uh, it was basically between two characters. Here we go, that's number one, that's number two. And uh, really this character doesn't have any... Um, extra so we can actually improve the authority of that character over there meanwhile what we want to do is we want to improve the zeal of this character over here and uh, we really don't want to improve her cunning as of yet because we want to start uh, 
using uh, Quince Quinctia and of course Lucretia to level each other up and if we get the cunning way too high by sending her on a vac vacation then it'll be impossible for Quinctia who has lower zeal to improve her zeal and she just needs one more zeal so the idea is this is seven so we have to get her zeal to two plus seven which is basically nine and then she can go ahead and improve the zeal of this character over here. Meanwhile, of course, Lucretia does have low gravitas, so she won't be able to upgrade um, Quinctia. However, we can see if we can use Quinctia on some other characters. And for now, we can use her on uh, Agricola over here. And we will begin to do that in the next turn. However, let's just select any of our other party wives and see if we can level up the public order in any of the other provinces. And it seems like Cisalpina would be a good option. By doing that, not only do we improve the loyalty, but we also improve the public order situation in uh, Cisalpina. Uh, meanwhile, things in Latium looking good. As you can see, Latium is making 22,652. And this is why the slave trader is super important as it is adding up that modifier. If I have to show you really quickly over here, all you have to do is select the province of Latium and mouse over this uh, income value over here, which is 22,652. And as you can see, the province wealth is actually 6,509 denarii per turn. However, thanks to our tax modifier, as well as our slave modifiers, which is counteracting that uh, minus 21.4% empire maintenance, you can see our income is 22,652 up from just the province wealth of 6,509 denarii. Meanwhile, what's happening over here is we are actually recruiting up Legio 1 Hispanica and we are getting as many of the Romanized Cretan archers as we can in order to give them to our main Legio 1 Italica. Meanwhile, down in the south, we have moved Legio 2 Fratensis. Uh, that played a crucial part in capturing Alalia in the first Punic War. However, in this Punic War, they will be uh, sat in Sicily, protecting the island from any Carthaginian incursions. Meanwhile, our fleet classes 1 Neptunia is being uh, headed by Julius Capito. As you can see, it is a fairly respectable fleet for now, and it should be able to fend off any Carthaginian attempts to invade the islands. However, without any further ado, let us go ahead and end the turn and I will see you all in the future. Most likely Carthage will declare war on me and, uh, you know, we will be launched into that second Punic War. And as such, uh, it will be a very interesting second Punic War, I guarantee you. Alright, welcome to the future and Carthage has declared war upon us and... Uh, we have made a defensive agreement again with the Masesli and they will join our war efforts, hopefully. Let's select that and the Masesli are at war with Carthage. So that was a nifty piece of uh, diplomacy. However, Carthage is attempting to attack our settlement. And uh, what we are going to do over here is we are going to fight this battle and I will see you all in the battle. However, just keep in mind in this battle there would be a chance that you know some of these armies are going to go underground and if that is the case then i am just gonna you know pause the video and i will see you all after the battle is won i mean it will be a guarantee that the battle will be won because all of the glitch is basically a lot of the armies going underground and not being able to fight and basically you wait for the timer to run out as I explained in the episode with the first Punic War. And uh, once the timer runs out, the AI automatically loses. However, that being said, let us actually go to our options, game settings, and reduce the timer to, let's say, 40 minutes for the uh, for the AI to capture the settlement. And I'm just going to quick save over here, and I will hop into the battle, and I will see you all in that battle. All right, welcome to the battle. Let us begin with our deployments. But before that, we are going to group up our units as best as we can. Go ahead, select our cavalry left and right. And of course, uh, we also 
want to um, get our Prince Hastati, sorry, in that uh, group as well as the Princapes. Get them in that group as well. And get these guys here. And finally these guys. Okay, perfect. Now, just have a quick look at this city. They will be landing here and eventually they have to go for this area. And this is a different kind of a settlement. So I'm guessing that it won't glitch out as in it has leveled up. So guessing it shouldn't glitch out and I can only hope for that. Meanwhile, as far as the Hastati are concerned, I don't want to get too close where... You know, where the enemy can uh, pretty much uh, shoot me from the safety of their ships. But rather, what I want to do is I definitely want to maybe put a couple of Hastati here. Just two of them, maybe. If I can put three. I can leave the three over there. That seems to be fine. Maybe get a couple of Hastati here as well. Not that it makes any difference. Maybe get them over here to block this entrance. Okay, so that's one. That's two. And uh, let's get another couple of Hastati. Say somewhere in here if we can. And okay, we have an extra Hastati unit. That can kind of sort of be in somewhere in reserve. Okay. Uh, as archers, or s archers are concerned, they can be somewhat in this direction, I guess. Hopefully. And I think what will happen is that most of the enemy troops will land by sea. However, just the cavalry will come via land. So we have to watch out for that. And I think we need to give ourselves a little bit more breathing room. So let's get the Soki somewhere here, I think. But I could block. Hmm. This settlement is a little bit weird, honestly, so to speak. So I could technically block this area, okay. And of course, there's this that leads to both routes. So we can get another bunch of uh, Astati over here. On the narrowest section possible. Okay, that's a little bit better. And the reason being is that we don't want to bunch up too much because we can't put our entire army over there. And uh, next up, okay, this, both of these areas kind of come here, but it's a bit too close to the shoreline, so I don't really like that. However, I could deploy some units over... Right, I need to protect this because then they could pretty much hit my flank. So we get a couple of them here. A couple of them here to block this avenue. Okay. Get the other Prince Pays. And get them a little bit like this. On the narrow section. And we can now position our Triarii to kind of block things. As much as we can. Okay, use our Pedites. We have a couple of them. They can block this axis if need be. Alright. By the looks of it. It seems that we are almost done blocking everything. We put our general. Put all of our cavalry. Up in the center. And we are going to respond with our cavalry. Get the Velites up here. Missile troops here. Okay. And we just have two Perites by the looks of it. So one and two. Um, these are extra troops. We could possibly just keep them as a reserve. To kind of help with the front lines. Let's see. Keep one here. We can keep the other one somewhere here. Alright. Now it's time to put our deployables. So we're going to put one here maybe. And could put... Another over here. I think if they do come via that narrow area. Get a couple of stakes up here. Maybe a couple of traps over here. Actually, you know what? I want to keep the traps as close to my troops as possible. So that, uh, you know, we don't limit our own movement. So let's get a couple of 
We'll put the traps here as well. Okay. I think with that, I am happy and we can go ahead. Have a quick look at our strategic overview. And as you can see, we kind of blocked the enemy from coming via here. Over here, they have a little bit of freedom. They can choose to go in one of three directions here or here, or here, all of which are guarded. Of course, uh, of course, we are guarding the attack from the sea and of course from this side as well. And finally over here as well. So yep, I'm happy with that. Let's go ahead and start the battle. I'm gonna fast forward a bit over here. Enemy reinforcements approaching. And as you can see, all of their cavalry units are coming from this direction. Okay. So I definitely want to get rid of their cavalry units. Apart from that, their ships are also landing in this direction. So let's actually get our archers up here a little bit closer and toggle on that guard mode. Okay, and by the looks of it, all of these, with the exception of just two of them, appear to be uh, melee calves, so that's good for us. And just a little bit slow. You can see some of the troops have managed to land. We've got to be careful of that. Okay. Wonderful. Once our Hastati have thrown all of their Pila, they can go ahead and get into that formation. And I think I'm happy for now, so just go ahead and start bracing. Wonderful. Good, perfect. So it seems like all the enemy cav is coming from here. So by the looks of it, this unit should be more or less free. So let's actually take them around. And before they do that, they can possibly destroy these traps since they are no longer required. Should help us kind of get a little bit of... Uh, Really, why can't you destroy the traps? Okay, there we go. Should help us uh, be able to kind of maneuver our cavalry. And of course, we don't need all of these troops. We need that guy there still to protect. However, we can get... Uh, seems like, for the most part, the entire attack will be coming from kind of like this direction. So I do want to form up there as quickly as I can. Or I could be a little bit patient actually, and I, I think I am going to go ahead and be a little bit patient with that. Okay, meanwhile these units have done dealing with those traps. Uh, they, are, they are another bunch of traps that we need to deal with, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to move our archers in and around the enemy units. Get a cavalry over here if we can, as well as the other cavalry. Good. Just a quick look at what's happening over here. Can go ahead and put up that defensive formation once again. Prevent these guys from getting hit. Wonderful. And of course, as you can see, this battle is absolutely massive. And it seems like these guys have kind of done with the trap. So we can move them ahead. And then move them kind of around over here. And uh, they are going to throw their... They are going to throw their Pila at the rear of the enemy calf. Meanwhile, our other calf can kind of get, since they are in position, and kind of put them in that wedge formation for now. And we really want to get rid of the archers because they are raining a fire down upon us. So I'm actually going to bring my archers somewhere over here instead. And if I do that, will they come? Now they will come via an absolutely horrible path. So I'm going to leave the archers over there. See if we can. Oh, that is bad, actually. Okay, we're going to move our general to deal with that. Okay. 
get our regular hastati over here protect the archers get the archers over here yeah soki can come around over there and i think they should meanwhile our other cav should bomb up over here And I need to attack this unit to give my general a bit of wiggle room over here. Quick look at, I believe these guys are all Hastati uh, Samnitiki, so that's pretty good. We're not going to take a bunch of casualties. The Prince of Pace over here can go ahead and attack. Meanwhile, quick look at what's going on over here with Group 4. I have a bunch of cavalry coming in. And of course, our Hastati just get there in time. Meanwhile, uh, the regular Equites have done a wonderful charge against this Numidian unit. And uh, they should pretty much get out of the battle ASAP, ASAP. Get our Hastati in the regular position. Our general, go ahead, hit those archers. Archers uh, can do a significant amount of damage if you let them uh, be uh, the way they are over time. Our Sokiai cavalry can go ahead, charge. Let's have a look at what's going on with Group 4. Everything seems to be fine. Principes can begin to throw their Pila. Let's go ahead, throw it into that blob. General. Okay. One of our units has used all its ammunition. Go ahead, inspire these troops. These guys are losing decisively. Meanwhile, over here, so are these guys. We can pull our Soki cav a bit behind. Meanwhile, our regular cav is also looking pretty good, pretty decent for now. And now we want to trap as much of the Carthaginian army as we possibly can. So very quickly, I am going to readjust my line over here. Go ahead and deploy them in that defensive formation over here so that the enemy can't get across or escape. We need to get our general out of there. Let's go ahead and do that. Because he could take some significant losses if he doesn't get out of there keep in mind most of these units do have javelins as well so I'm gonna get our general in and behind meanwhile no threat from here so we could position another bunch of troops over there get them across to run over there real quick wonderful archers are nearly done with their ammunition and it's some massive damage over here like a lot of casualties One of our units is can go ahead and maybe slightly move up our uh our hastari troops okay Alright, we can move our cavalry over here, general as well over there. And I believe these were all the principes. So we are going to quickly line them up as quickly as we can do so. We're going to move them in this fashion. Because we didn't have the time to deal with them. Okay, meanwhile, this unit come up a little bit behind. I do believe they have a way to get around over here, so we have to kind of protect that. Well, we can actually protect it over here, because this protects the flank a bit more effectively. Okay, 
Okay. Meanwhile, we do have another bunch of cavalry that's coming. Let's uh, prepare for them. And the way we're going to do it is we are going to move around the army. Or move our cavalry a little bit wide. And this is group 3. Oh, sorry, group 4. Group 3 is over here somewhere. We can go ahead and charge at the backs over here. Like two of these calves charge over there. Two of these ones charge over here. Quick look at group 4. Okay, things are looking quite fine. I'm going to keep this calf right over here to intercept should the need arise. By the looks of it, they are going for the calf all the way over there. So go ahead and charge with the other calf. Try not to get caught out. Meanwhile, over here, Hastati can slightly push up. There we go. I'm gonna put them on that walk. Group 3 is nearly done. That's good. Get a general over here. We do have a reserve unit that needs to protect this opening. Should the enemy decide to come from that direction. Four. Wonderful. Go ahead. Charge into that unit. And with that, we managed to rout that cavalry. Let's see if we can wipe it out entirely. Okay, group 3, you can come all the way here, get away, remove your wedge formation because it makes it a lot harder to navigate within cities. Principes. Meanwhile, the Principes, go ahead, form up your lines. Toggle on that melee mode. Okay, and for the most part, it doesn't look like they're going to attack us from either of these directions. So it's better to kind of face in this way. Instead of taking losses by being hit from the sides. Now we can order our Hastati to push forward. Start to wedge in this cavalry. And we have another cavalry that's coming our way. So let's uh, prepare. Same thing. Nothing much different and over here we want to pull out this cav all the way around around the settlement so that we can hit these hoplite units in the back. Quick look at what's going on with group 4. We will need to move sideways in both instances. Kind of split up our cav, no problem. And uh, accordingly we are going to start to attack with we can see that they're charging this unit, so we can actually delay. Meanwhile, we can slowly approach with this other cav, split up a little bit more. And now we charge with this cav, should be quite good over here. Quite a good, decent charge. And uh, we need to charge with this cav, we need to turn around. Go ahead, charge. This cav is going to take a little bit of casualties, I think. However, everything else seems to be fine. Meanwhile, these hoplites have gone ahead and decided to engage. We are going to move group 3 in and behind. One of the good things we have is we have Valites, which we haven't been using so far in this battle. We can use them to throw their Pila into the flanks over here. Go ahead, put this guy into that defensive formation. Hey, wonderful. Meanwhile, this calf just got absolutely annihilated. We can get it down to below 30. It should be wiped. And there we go. Below 30. Wonderful. Over here, our Hastati have done a fantastic job. So we are going to go ahead and bring them back into the center for some well-deserved rest. Our archers have also completely exhausted their ammunition. Bring our cavalry up a front. What the hell is going on here? That is absolutely nuts. What's 
Let's go ahead, put our Triari in that defensive formation. Get our cavalry up ahead. The enemy general is dead. And I don't know if this is the glitch or part of it, but we shall see. We shall soon see. Okay, Valites are nearly in position. behind we're gonna try to surround some of these units because they are hoplite units and we don't really need to um, and since they are pushing in a very awkward manner around us hey okay, the valites come on get into position Equites can go ahead, charge into the backs over there. So far the battle is going quite well if I should say so myself. Lost only a bunch of Sokiai troops uh, with the Prince base of course taking uh, the Prince base Amnikti taking the brunt of the damage. And I am actually okay with the Samnikti taking the brunt of the damage. Okay. Right, we have a couple of troops over here. Let's bring them around. Elites are almost in position. Go ahead, take our cavalry into that corner. The idea will be to kind of hit these guys into the flank. And a quick look of where our general is. Kind of forgot him in this entire battle. Move our other equites over there. And a quick look at... Oh my god. Just look at the carnage over here. They lost their entire cavalry. In just one narrow city. Um, and our velites, go ahead. Start shooting into the backs of these units, please. Now these guys should be taking a significant amount of damage with the tons of elites just unleashing a volley after volley on upon them. As you can see they're already routing, busy routing. We're gonna switch um, to the other side. Okay, I don't know what's going on here. Okay, start throwing your pila. Oops, I don't know why the elites are acting a bit weird. Come back, please. Quick look at group 3. Okay. We need to form up our Triarii line. Because they are going to be holding out over there. And actually narrow them down a bit. Go ahead. Narrow it down. Deploy over there. 6 Triarii type units. That should be quite good. Meanwhile, Avelites. Hey. They are throwing some of their Pila, which is good. This is exactly what we want, kinda. Meanwhile, these troops can go ahead hit this guy that's kinda moving awkwardly. We are gonna let those uh, lines kind of falter we don't really care about those lines we can they're just principe samnitiki the allied principes and if they actually die i'm not gonna be too concerned with that because of course they are easy to replenish and we are about the halfway mark of the battle and already things are looking quite good i'm gonna move our velites over here And perhaps attack that unit of swordsmen. Carthaginian fleet is still slowly and steadily moving towards the harbor. 
And I think it's time to just uh, move our Principes behind. I mean, I'm pretty happy with what they have achieved so far. We do have a bunch of Hastati that can kind of form up over here. But actually, I can kind of form them up over here. Belites need to form up. Meanwhile, these guys... And this is the problem with city battles, is that we have really top-tier cavalry, but unfortunately... Really unfortunately, uh, we can't really maneuver that much and that actually reduces the impact the damage does uh, of damage you can do on the charge. So, a little bit annoying over there. Uh, Velites, can you begin to, you know, dish out some punishment onto the backs of these units as we so desperately need you to? Wonderful. Go ahead, charge this unit. Go ahead, charge over here. The Elite is going to fire at this general unit. Meanwhile, the cavalry... I think stay where you are. All right, reform with the Hastati line. Wonderful, we can stop firing with our Velites. Get our Hastati over there. Meanwhile, our Principes, who have done quite well, can come back here for some well-deserved rest. We can put this Principes because he's in quite a decent shape. All of these guys in group 6, of course. And we can put the group 5 principes in the front line as well. Go for it. Okay. Meanwhile, group 6. You're going to come here. You can also be part of group 5, really. And go ahead, redeploy over here. Quickly get these guys to shoot this hoplite unit in the flank. And they should do some pretty significant damage hitting in the unshielded side of that hoplite unit. As you can see, already taking down the enemy unit. Alright, meanwhile that principe is still <laughs> headed for the hills. And uh, he will come back eventually. He has a long way to go, so he will come back eventually. That's for sh that's for certain. Move back once again. Very quickly move our cavalry out of the city. Just get a bit of perspective of what exactly is going on. Meanwhile, over here, our center of uh, triarias can come here as well. This triaria come to the center. Oh, that's not good. Okay, and we're gonna fast forward a little bit over here. Put these guys on skirmish mode. Come here, hurry up. Quickly attack the flanks and you now can take your revenge on that troop. One of our units has used all its ammunition. Wonderful. Meanwhile, over here we really quickly want to align everyone into that defensive formation. Wonderful stuff. This unit can plug the gap over here. Get these three area in and behind. Protect this opening, sort of, kind of. Just straight up, straighten up our lines a little bit over here. It's quite a massive battle. Whoa. 
what we can do is we can actually try to get our some of our triarii around the enemy unit like this and then go ahead and charge over here it's wonderful like the Carthaginians now have like just 12 minutes to capture the city but obviously even if they had unlimited time as you can see we are we have fought quite well at long last this principe has stopped running stop realizing that there's any danger while well, we can get our velites over here we have a bunch of other velites i imagine wonder where they are okay they're all over here so let's get all of our velites over there sort of kind of you guys can come here here and here all right just hold down the space bar to make sure that none of the troops are going in any awkward uh, direction. We move our triarii back behind. And the Velites have done a good job over here. I'm going to keep moving around, trying to hit those units in the back again. And there's the bug actually, as you can see, they are trying to reach that area. And uh, as such, that's a little bit weird, kind of a bug. And we are going to move a bit forward. About 10 minutes left to this battle. And of course, Carthage has taken a significant amount of uh, casualties in this battle in an attempt to try and uh, take the settlement from us. Quite defensible, actually. Defensive battles are so easy in this game. Meanwhile, these uh, Triaria have managed to kind of get away from the enemy. So I'm going to keep them in that narrow formation. Get all the way around. Keep coming here. Keep coming out in that narrow formation. Keep pushing. Move all our Soki to hit those uh, lighter troops. Move our Velites behind. Soki cavalry can go ahead, hit that cavalry. Meanwhile, these guys can sort of hit the flanks over here. Get our Soki to, or our Velites to hit that unit. Soki Cav or Equite Cavs are taking a bit of casualties. We're going to pull them slightly behind in order to prevent that. Go ahead, charge into this unit, which is also glitched. Move our Soki all the way away. Turn off that uh, wedge formation. And we managed to defeat yet another yet another troop trying to reach that glitched point. We keep moving and charge into that unit. Go ahead, charge, charge, charge. And these units should lose decisively after that. See, group 5, we can kind of tidy up your front lines. Meanwhile, a Triaria unit over there is in a deep trouble, so we are going to try to rescue it. Get it behind. And the Triaria are the kind of units you don't want to see take damage, and the reason being is because they come from that uh, important uh, population class. Uh, still waiting for this battle to get over. Let's. Uh... Yeah, it doesn't look like the Carthaginians are anywhere close to winning this one. I mean, go ahead, charge over here. Get a cavalry as well. 
to cycle charge. We can actually send our other cavalry over here and they can go around and hit these units. That would be a lot more um a lot more uh, powerful. And we'll uh, send our general across. Once again, charge into the enemy over there. Alright. That should rout them. These guys over here, hurry up. Kinda got stuck in the middle of those uh, hoplite units. We are gonna inspire once again with our general. Get our cavalry all the way over here. Move our cav. Keep moving them around. Well, this unit can go ahead and charge into the back of those units. And that calf can come here, around. Keep hitting this unit in the back. Come around. Right. Equites, come on, keep moving, keep pushing. Wonderful. Took a bit of casualties, however, nothing uh, too big. We can move up with these troops, actually. Start to flank over here. Go ahead, flank over there. These units are losing decisively. Go ahead, hit those archers. Cav over here can go ahead and hit those archers. Alright, wonderful. We got a bunch of Pedites and again we're gonna have to charge and help them. Meanwhile, move our general over here. Inspire them to stand and fight. Get a cavalry over here in that corner. You can actually win this battle. Only three seconds left though. And uh, yeah, I guess with that, I will see you all in the campaign. And we have destroyed quite a significant amount of the Carthaginian force. Uh, as you can see, they have lost about 70% of their army and we haven't lost anything, uh, to be honest with you. And we are going to go ahead and slave all the captives. I mean, we could ransom them, but we are going to go ahead and slave them. And uh, I guess I will see you all in the next turn if Carthage has decided it's had enough of bloodshed in this end turn. All right, welcome to the next turn. We are in the winter of 265 BC. And let's just quickly get rid of all our notifications. A personality report. Not bad. Faction destroyed. Ill Illyrian pirates. That's also pretty good. Hey. Alright. Uh, our economy. We are struggling a little bit. And that is because I've gone ahead and decided to destroy that uh, lives, uh, livestock. And the reason being... Is I actually want the fish trader. It gives about the same wealth from agriculture, 500. However, it also gives that plus 4 growth per turn. What it doesn't give is the food. And I think as far as food is concerned, we are looking quite good. So, that's not a big deal. Meanwhile, this army has almost replenished. Like, it hasn't even fought a single battle at all. And uh, we don't want to entirely deplete our force over here. So what we are going to do, I believe, is we are going to stick in Panormos, perhaps. 
have a bunch of proletari. I mean... These guys are peregrini, so I don't really care. So are these guys. It's just the plebis, okay? As well as the patricians. And I think that's about 50 plebis or even less. So I can deal with that. Meanwhile, the defeated Carthaginian armies are over here. And we are not going to let them get back home. Um, meanwhile, before that, in Latium, as you can see, um, we are not yet expanding any settlement we are waiting for this uh, for Roma to level up which requires five growth so hopefully in the next turn that should happen can go ahead and uh, improve some of the Let's go ahead keep improving over here we want to keep converting our provinces to Latin and a cultural conversion is a bit slow However, at least Corsica Sardinia is now max on that Latin culture. Meanwhile, we have a spy over here. And I think it would be time to ideally start to um, explore a little bit. As you can see over here, things seem to be... We have the Edetani all the way up here. And uh, we'll need to see how uh, the Carthaginians have uh, done in Hispania. Hopefully they will, uh, they have done quite well. And um, if they haven't, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I am going to script it in that they have owned a majority of Hispania. And uh, especially the eastern coast. And uh, eventually we are going to have to launch our historical invasion into Hispania with our legions. While holding on to, of course, Sicily, Corsica, and Sardinia. And eventually we will also have to take Syracuse as it was conquered during the Second Punic War. However, that being said and done, let us uh, quickly go ahead and... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and attack this fleet over here. And I guess I will be seeing you all in the battle. Alright, welcome to the battle. I realize this is a super easy battle and I don't know why I actually decided to fight this. But at least we can have a look at our new and improved Roman fleet. So let's go ahead and uh, we can fast forward over here a little bit because this is an easy battle. Shouldn't really lose this. And if we play our cards right, we shouldn't actually even lose a single ship. Meanwhile, we can redirect over here and slow down the battle now. Move up our ships, a huge gap opening up in that center. Meanwhile, our ramming is, of course, insanely powerful for now. Have a quick look of developments over here. This ship can cut back in. Go ahead. Alright. Hit that unit. Hit this unit. Keep pushing forward. And it's this general we need to watch out for. We are getting rammed over here a little bit. Carthage's fleets are still so powerful. Uh, it is insane how much uh, damage they can do and how much damage and punishment they can take, really. Meanwhile, our reserve ships can begin to attack over here. We need to keep hitting this general. Wonderful. An entire unit has and uh, quickly get these ships out and running. And we have lost a couple of ships, honestly, so to speak. And it, it really is the Carthaginian fleet that's causing all of this problem. Not really the other ships. And we do have a couple of ships over here. Gonna have to whack this ship out of existence. And as you can see, they're still, still fighting on. It is rather insane how well they can do. Alright, so down goes the Carthaginian fleet. We did quite good. We got rid of their garrison fleet as well. We are going to go ahead and slave all the captives once again. 
we could decide to attack this, but I do believe that uh, the garrison will come to their rescue. Just have a quick look. Nope, and they run away. Not into those waters. And uh, while they might not be able to, you know, retreat and we could get rid of them, and they are just a, an army, I'm not too concerned. We are going to ourselves retreat. And the reason being is we want to build up our fleet. I think we have done quite well over here. But it is time to build up our fleet and can improve our ship health. As well as the ramming. As well as the upkeep. And okay, with that I am happy. And it seems for now I am done with everything I have to do for this turn. Apart from the fact, we can have a look at Legio 1 Italica. It's uh, completely built up. However, Legio 1 Hispana is still underway. And as such, uh, we still need to build all of our Sokiai troops. Uh, we can get the last two of our Triarii over here. And after that, we will need to build all of our Sokiai infantry. Uh, apart from that, I don't think there's much else to do in this turn. Maybe have a quick look at politics. And uh, our other parties seem to be quite loyal. However, we are going to quickly check and see if we can upgrade uh, several characters. And definitely want to upgrade this character over here. As well as use her to upgrade the zeal of that character over there. As you can see, these characters are busy helping each other level up. And that's quite good. And with that being said and done, I think I am quite happy and I'm going to go ahead and end the turn and I will see you all in the next turn. Alright, welcome to the next turn. We are going to go ahead and upgrade the settlement of Latium. We can just quickly check what we can build. We can build manufacturing, however, I feel like it doesn't do much really. I mean, considering we don't really have any industry in the province of Latium, doesn't make any sense however it does give a huge amount of income and it does give some however this building does give 40 wealth from all commerce as well as 20 wealth from farming which is quite good but then it gives 270 wealth from manufacturing industry which is not all that good and of course it uh, impacts the commercial stimulation edict with a buff to industry which once again is not all that good I also want to build up Roma historically, and by historically I mean I want to build the Col the Colosseum as well as the uh, Circus Maximus. However, I will not be building those for now as they are not that powerful early game, and in fact they in they even consume food, so that would put us in a bit of a predicament. Uh, what, we, what we can, it's really a choice between uh, the Forum Venerium, uh, which basically gives 650 wealth from local commerce as well as, you know, some buffs to our trade tariffs as well as buffs to all commerce, all forms of commerce. Keep in mind, all co forms of commerce also means maritime. And of course, the other thing is uh, the Forum uh, Bor Borium. And the Forum Borium actually gives 300 wealth from livestock and it uh, gives a 50% wealth from livestock agriculture. However, we have just got rid of our livestock building. So I guess the clear winner over here is going to be the Forum Venarium. So let's go ahead and uh, build up for that. Meanwhile, a quick look at our other provinces. Our income is a bit, on, a bit suffering. And that's because Latium has taken a hit of about 3,000. And that's because we have been, uh, you know... Um, repurposing the pro uh, the province in the hopes of getting even more growth rate and uh, very soon we should be able to do much better in Latium. However our fleet over here has done recruiting classes 1 Neptunia. Let's actually go ahead and dock him into the boat of uh, Panormos I would say. Panormos is a bit more centrally located and therefore should be able to snipe a lot easier. And uh, we are going to go ahead and end the turn over here. And in fact, go ahead and even end the video. But before we go ahead and do that, just a quick look at our politics. And as you can see, we can improve the authority of this character. As well as, let's say, the zeal of that character. 
bringing her up to 6 zeal, which means now they can effectively level each other up, which is always good. Uh, let's have a quick look at our... At our uh, governor generals, shall we? Before we go ahead and end this episode. And for the most part, we can replace this with the tax rate. And I guess this guy already has that tax rate. And finally, the Lictorus of Asculum also has the tax rate. So, I guess it's all looking good. And uh, yeah, pretty much uh, not much happened in this episode. We did fight a massive uh, battle, uh, securing our grip over Sicily. And preventing the Carthaginian offensive into Sicily. However, keep in mind I am playing with a realistic expansion sub-1. Which means that... Uh, Hannibal uh, will spawn randomly anywhere in Italia. However, once again, I'm going to use the script and make sure he spawns somewhere up here north in the Alps. And which he will then attempt to, you know, march southwards into Italia. Now, meanwhile, the objective of the next episode will be to launch a counter-offensive into uh, Iberia. And to take away the Carthaginian Iberian holdings and then conclude the Second Punic War. Hopefully we will be able to achieve that in the next episode. However, it might take a bit of time and we might actually need two episodes to deal with the Carthage in Iberia. Since Carthage has just so much land in Iberia that we need to conquer. And at the same time, a lot of them are actually coastal settlements. We go to the map over here have a bunch of coastal settlements all along the coast over there which means we really need to protect them while we try to push our offensive or a Carthaginian fleet can easily snipe it away from us however that being said and done I am going to go ahead and end the video so thank you all for watching hope you all enjoyed and if you like the video please like the video and don't forget to subscribe if you are interested for more peace and love